just the transition that you know, you're going to have to. Is it a big transition? You know, obviously different kind of reps. But maybe just talk about that whole thing. Yeah, I, you know, obviously when when you're the backup, it's always, you know, you, your emotions are up and down with during the course of a game, things like that. But um, yeah, it's a transition. It's a difference a little bit, but I think definitely because I've because I've had the ability to play so much football that you, you kind of fall back into sync and, and get back in rhythm pretty quickly. How big are these next two preseason games for you, especially considering you might be playing in the opener uh, week one, depending on what happens with Zach Wilson? Well, we'll see. I mean, you always like to get out there and, and get reps and get in sync with everybody. But at the same time, like your practices, you know, probably end up being the bulk of the importance. Uh, the preseason stuff is usually just to go out there and, and make sure that everything's clean and that you can feel good about where you're head, you know, mentally and, and stuff like that heading into the opener. I think that's mostly most of the, what that's about is getting your confidence going, uh, allowing the group to feel a certain amount of swagger that they have and and going to going to week one ready to take off. How was Zach mentally and spirits wise and what just give him any advice on analyzing? He seems pretty good today. You know, obviously after the game, you could tell he was a little down. But you know, I, I think considering you know what happened, I think we got pretty good news. So I think he's I think he's been in, in better spirits today. Obviously, you don't want him to be out, but this is an opportunity potentially. You know, to fast forward to the first game of the year, it looks like potentially you could be in there. How much are you looking forward to being? number one reps all the time and kind of just getting back into that mode for, for an extended period of time. Yeah, it's obviously like a lot better mentally when you're, you know, when you're the guy taking all the reps and you know what your situation is heading into Sunday. Um, you know, you, you, can, you can lock in on certain things and prepare a certain way. Not that it's any different other ways, but like it's just, it's not as much of a roller coaster with, with your emotions and, and confidence and things like that. You're able to go out there and feel like you get the confidence that you need during the week to go out there and do all those things. So obviously that's why, you know, whoever's starting the week gets the bulk of the reps and, and, and they make you feel as comfortable as possible. It's obviously a little bit, it's better to play the game that way. Do you allow yourself at all to, I mean, I know you're, you know, it's, you're trained to kind of look at the next day ahead, but do you allow yourself to think about the potential of playing the Ravens? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a long, a lot of water under the bridge, but, <laughs> Um, but you know that's that's out there. I mean, you know, it's the chances are the sack might not be available for that moment. Right. Okay. I mean, obviously, people are going to bring it up to me, and you know, you, you think about that. Um, I've been in a bunch of games where guys have played, you know, their past teams, and coaches have played their past teams, and usually the emotions uh, are definitely <laughs> crazy. I mean, guys try to act like they're so cool during the week, and that doesn't mean anything, you know. So I, I know, I, I've probably thought about it a tiny bit. It's so far away and you, we, who knows what's gonna happen at this point. Uh, but I've definitely thought about that in a little bit. Like, oh yeah, it's not gonna be a big deal. And I'm, I'm gonna know deep down, like, okay, it's, it's, it's not, you know, I'm gonna try to make sure it's not the biggest deal in the world. But at the same time, it's, it's uh, I've been through it enough. I've seen guys go through it. Um, it's 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 a it's a different it's a different thing. I mean, we Steve Smith played Carolina. Uh, I don't maybe the first year he was in Baltimore, and I mean it's comical looking back on it that he kind of was trying to act like he was all cool about it, and he's already super emotional and like next level when it comes to like intense when it comes to game day. Uh, but I'll never forget that day. I mean, he was on he was on another planet, and it worked out good for him. So you know, it, it, it can probably go both ways. Robert has said on a couple of occasions that he absolutely considers you still like a starter in the NFL, still capable of starting. Do you, you know, where do you see yourself now? I, think, I mean, do you agree with that? I'm, I'm guessing you probably agree with that. But, yeah, I mean, uh, you're setting me up to yeah. like say, of course, and then you're going to, you guys are going to write something where, oh, Joe Flacco, like, he, you know. <laughs> he's guys get to a point in their career where, where yeah. they know what, they're the backup, yeah. the mentor type yeah, I get, guy. I know, yeah. I get it. It's such a tough question to answer. Like, listen, I'm happy with the role that I'm, that I'm in, and I, I love being here and, and being completely focused in whatever I'm doing, and right now that's going out to practice and trying to have the best days I can. Whenever I am out on that field, I'm trying to push myself to be better and, to, and, and be the best. Like, I want to be able to go in there and answer that I had the best day that I could have, you know? And 
right now that's what I'm focused on. And listen, I wouldn't be playing this game. Like, I, I, I'm happy with what I'm doing, and I love, you know, helping out a young guy and playing my role in this team. But, I mean, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't have the desire to still be, you know, really, really good at what I do and didn't still believe that I could play this game. So, so is there a process when you go from working with the twos to the ones and just building chemistry with those guys or the guys you haven't had a lot of chance to work with? Or? Yeah, like my cadence was a little bit different today. So you could see, like, there was a, like, Guys were moving a little quick on on me and stuff like that, like little things like that. But they usually that stuff usually irons itself out pretty quickly. Um, the guys that you're out there, th you know, we do still have some young receivers, but like usually when those guys get a good feel for things, it, it, it happens pretty. You know, you get in sync pretty quick, quickly with those guys. So I think the biggest the bigger thing is just like dealing with your emotions of getting out there with the ones now and not trying to do too much and stuff like that. Joe, what's your respect level, or for lack of a better word, for a guy like Streveler who's came out and you know, had a night the other night? And, right. Uh, well, it's, you know, it's just it's always cool to see that because like, the, the second halves are awesome to watch in preseason, and he literally hasn't taken a rep the entire camp. And, you know, I've never, I guess, you know, maybe my first year here, I was kind of similar when I suited up and I hadn't called a play in the offense that I was in, but like, I've never been through what he went through and you just gotta, just gotta go out there and just let it fly and play ball. And I think that's what he did a really good job of doing. That's what, that's what kind of stood out to me is the fact that he was able to, you know, he was able to put it all aside and just go out and play football and play fast and make decisions. And it worked out well, when you, obviously. When you, uh started your career along like 10 years ago, whatever it was, because you have a vision envision that you'd still be going at 37 and being talked about as like a week one starter and all. I know circumstances. Yeah, I think you envision that. Yeah. I, th I uh, yeah, when you, when you co first come in and you're getting ready to start week one, not that you actively think about, you know, being 40 years old or whatever and, and still, and still playing, but, um, but I, I do think most people and definitely I en envision playing, you know, for, for as long as I can, so. How helpful is your relationship with Calabrese going back to Denver, and, and how much have you enjoyed his growth as a coach? Yeah, well, it was, it was interesting because when when Rob was in Denver, I mean, he was running around doing all kinds of dirty work, and you know, he was in and out of meetings, handing things out. He was he was grinding, you know, so you didn't see a lot of him. Um, so it, it it is cool. I think he does a great job in there. You know, you can definitely tell he knows football, and he's excited about it every single day. Like he's really really into it, and that's the most important thing. Um, every now and then you think about the fact that I'm the oldest person in the room and it's, you know, it's tough to kind of wrap my head around because I don't really, I, when you're in the locker room and when you're around a bunch of, I mean, this sauce is like 20 or 21 years old. I mean, I view myself as like 25, 26 at max. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it, you know, it's just one of those things. You just kind of get used to it and you develop relationships and all that other stuff kind of goes out the window and. Uh, Rob's doing an awesome job, and like I said, the biggest thing with him is just the fact that he's excited every day to do it. So, you think you can go as long as Brady? <laughs> oh shit, man, Tom's different. Uh, to be able to do what he's done, uh, you know, he—it's he, he, crazy. I mean, in, in this generation, I mean, we have him, we have like the, the three tennis players that like are still going. Like we have guys that have like kind of set the bar so high in terms of what you can do physically. Um, they're definitely going to push like the next generation, you know, maybe we'll see a little bit more of that than we did in the past because those guys are going to have something to like try to reach and try to, you know, try to catch. But I don't know if anybody's reaching Tom, man. It was 10 years ago when you went on your run in Baltimore. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a little tough to believe that it was that long ago. Do these younger guys ever say anything to you that makes you feel old in terms of they yeah, watch you? Yeah, like because like I was saying, like I don't view myself as being like I don't view myself as an old person. But every now and then, when they when the, these guys come up and they say something to you, you I'm like, oh, okay, you think I'm like 50 years old, huh? <laughs> I, I got it. Um, that's why it's cool though. That's why it's so like you're so fortunate to be able to be in the locker room and like in that environment. Is because it really does truly keep you young. And then not only that, but like you get to know guys and you get to develop relationships with people and then they see you different, you know, and then after, after they get to, like, they interact with me for a little bit, they're sitting at lunch and we're chopping it up. And all of a sudden they see me in a couple minutes, they might see me completely different than they did, you know, before they sat down at the table. So it's, it's, uh, 
it's 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 really neat. I kind of like I like being it. Uh, I like I feel like I'm like a dad that like is easy to pick on, and they, they like laughing at me because of that. So I, I embrace it. CJ Uzama uh, said that he thinks we're one of the funniest guys on the team. Right now. What, do you, what do you think about that? I think it's what I just said. Like you know, like you, the old guy that you can pick on, and he just doesn't really care, and he says some crazy stuff sometimes. <laughs> that these guys have probably never heard before. And, you know, just, I feel like a lot of it's that generational thing, so.